I'm Leo Phillips, host of This Must Be The Gig. We're a weekly podcast that documents everything about the world of live music. Speaking with choreographers, costume and set designers, the people who run beloved venues and festivals, and, of course, speaking with musicians about that one gig that changed their lives. Get your peek behind the curtain at consequenceofsound.net, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Consequence Podcast Network. Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org, Consequence of Sound, and the Consequence Podcast Network. Uh, wherever you're listening from right now, I do hope you take a chance to uh, take that second to hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with all of the interviews that we release. In fact, it's new interviews straight to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So it's a great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones, know what's happening in the music world. And you can find us at all the big popular spots like iTunes and Apple Podcasts, at Spotify, uh, YouTube, Anchor, Podchaser, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcasts from. I'm Kyle Meredith, and today I'm going to be talking with Courtney Marie Andrews about her brand new record called Old Flowers. It's a beautiful, beautiful record, but a heartbreaking record, probably because it's an album about heartbreak. And as she'll tell you, uh, it's it was a nine-year relationship uh, that came to an end, and that makes up the entire bones of the, uh, of the record. So we'll talk about the journey that you get going from track one through the end of it, and how, you know, that's it's a really vulnerable moment exposing yourself. With, with those kind of lyrics. Of course, it's not the first time she's written about that, so I want to hear the difference in approaching the subject years later and the beautiful, sparse arrangements. It's a minimal record. There are very few instruments on most of these songs, so we're going to get the backstory on that as well. And outside of the record, she's actually she had a busy year starting out this. She played the Grand Ole Opry for the very first time. It was on New Year's Eve, and it was with John Prine, someone that she's uh, duetted with before, so we get to hear a little bit about that. And one of my favorite parts of the interview, uh, I asked her about Melody. She's really good at it. And not only does she give me the backstory about uh, the melody behind one of those songs, If I Told, uh, but also that it was uh, had to do with a, a bottle of wine or one that at least helped. All that and more coming up, talking about this record called Old Flowers. It's Kyle Meredith with Courtney Marie Andrews. Hi. It's Courtney. I want to compliment you first because uh, Old Flowers is a beautiful, beautiful record uh, that you've done here. It, maybe it's it's the perfect record for the time, but it has hit me uh, really, really in the in in the best ways uh, on this. And and I know there's a lot to talk about with with you know what you're singing about, but I wanted to start really with the music because even before I landed on the lyrics, the first thing I noticed was was how much you're doing with, with how little you're actually musically doing or seeming to do anyway, these sparse arrangements. What was the idea there? Was that intentional? And, and when you're doing that, when do you know when to stop? When, when, when becomes too much on a record like this? Yeah, I think our, it definitely was intentional. You know, these are personal, intimate conversations. So we wanted that to reflect in the music. And um, I think the overall guideline for that was, does it need anything? And if it doesn't, don't add it. And if it's, if it's taking away from the song and the voice and, and the vibe, then we can take it away. And so we were very delicate in that process in, in terms of uh, when something needed it. And I think we almost were going to make it an acoustic record, but some songs just called for certain things and, and sort of just went with our guts on that. <laughs> I think that'd be really, really di- I, I know that's really, really difficult for a lot of artists when they go in there. I mean, you know, a, a lot of songwriters would start a song just on one instrument, obviously, with it with a demo or everything. But it only feels like maybe other than, you know, really nice production. This is only just a little bit uh, of a step ahead of maybe how you originally wrote it in a room, as I imagine it anyway, by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And that was certainly the intention to to make it as personal and intimate as possible. So with a personal record, I know there's a lot about heartbreak on this record. I mean, maybe predominantly um, to some degree anyway. Was that also something that you knew that this record was going to be? I mean, once you see a theme, do you lean into it? No, you know, I think with this record, it just was all like it, this part of my life was so deeply at the forefront of my mind that I just couldn't write about anything else. 
like I nothing else came out and so it just ended up being a record about that purely because I was in this frame of mind you know it it certainly wasn't like I it intended to write every song about these subjects um it just sort of was all i could think about i was thinking about it last night and and what's the phrase that alaskans have like a hundred words for snow and you know on a on a record like this when when every song sort of becomes about the same thing it's it's really impressive that you're able to kind of take you that you're able to get so many songs out of you know sort of Sort of one idea, and, and 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 I'm generalizing and maybe too much here because obviously the uh, the the details kind of make the whole thing, you know, from song to song. But is that difficult at, at any point to try to find new ways to come at a similar angle? Yeah, I mean, they're all sort of like this. It's a long story, you know, this the journey of 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 love and of heartbreak. You know, it's it's very nuanced, and there's not just one feeling tied up in that and so I feel like there are always limitless and like boundless ways to to sort of explain those feelings and process them and some that I wasn't even aware I had. And and just to clear the air although not to snoop into your personal life but you know we we say heartbreak Uh, if you don't mind talking about it you're getting at a relationship here though right? Yeah absolutely. I mean, and I think the parts that you have to- talked openly about, I mean, this was a nine-year relationship, which obviously is a long time. So when a record becomes, when a record comes out, especially as the aftermath of a relationship, are these songs, do you find that they're defined by who you were within that moment or, or, or who you became? Or, or is that the journey? I think it's definitely the journey. In looking back on how we sort of placed the record, it feels like sort of the development of grief in a lot of ways. Like burlap string starts with the shock of grief and wanting to like go back and wish you could change it. And then it sort of leads into the end of the record, which is Ships in the Night. And that's sort of the the, the letter you send years later, hoping and wishing that they're well and that our past just didn't cross in the right way. And so yeah, I feel like it's definitely a journey and a and um I feel like also a moment in time for sure. I mean I certainly will feel differently in five years, I'm sure, about the record, you know? That's just human nature. <laughs> well, and, and, and there are moments on here, um, you know, self-projections, uh, maybe, you know, I, I mean, we all know how we feel in certain moments of our lives, and, and hopefully we understand that those are not the way we're always going to feel. And I wish I'd written down the song title. I, I apologize for that. But there's one line in here that stuck out when, when you say, I may never let, let, let love in again. And I thought, Wow, that's like one of the heaviest lines on this record. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I I really felt like that in that moment. And certainly that has changed. (laughs) (laughs) So so in a lot of ways, it felt like, yeah, it is of the moment. But it's also a journey, just like life. I mean, just like every song should be this new self-discovery. And that's the great thing about songs and, and about writing and that sort of thing. So. Yeah, that, that felt very real in that moment, for sure. And, and, and it's more than just that one. Those moments kind of happening here. And, and to write about this part of your life, to write about this style, to write about heartbreak, uh, I would think that that is to really expose yourself. And was that part ever frightening, knowing that, you know, what you're putting out there, these exact words are the words that we're going to hear? I've always felt like with songs is that they're yours when you're writing them. But once you, you know, tie up the... <laughs> I guess, existential bow or whatever you want to call it. It's not yours anymore. You're like giving it away and it's the world, you know, just like a painting. I feel like that's how songs are. At least that's how I treat them. And so with that mindset, I become detached with that, that feeling of being too vulnerable because also, I mean, that's what, that's the point of art and creating songs and, and, creating in general i just think that it's you give it away it feels like that ties back to even you know use the title honest life and uh, i've read you talk about you know honesty in your music uh, throughout the years and i guess you know with even with that album in mind you know this theme right here you know it's a theme i think you had visited back on honest life as well if that's the case are there obvious differences all these years later about how you approach uh, this theme I think the the difference is that when I was writing Honest Life, I don't think I knew myself completely as a woman yet, or I was still discovering that. Maybe we never know. I think that 
the difference is that this record is somebody maybe who's a little bit more world weary and there's never there's never a lack of hope but it's that just seen a little bit more well you do keep busy so i would hope so um yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I was i was even thinking you know for a short you know we, we've only done a full quarter of this year and, and for having everything shut down it seems like you fit a lot in the beginning of this year too and, and, you know, I'll, I'll jump outside of the album for a little bit because, you know, we lost one of our uh, favorite songwriters, John Prine, who I know you have known and, and you've played his songs in the past. It was it was recent, right, that you got to do the Grand Ole Opry with him? Yeah, New Year's Eve, I made my Grand Ole Opry debut with him and sang um, You've Got Gold with him. So I, I got to ask what it was like in two different ways. I mean, first, you know, I mean, we can talk about John, too. But w- what was it like playing the Grand Ole Opry for the first time? Uh, absolutely incredible. And it being New Year's Eve, I mean, it was kind of like it was an all encompassing, just one of the best New Year's Eve I've ever had, which is kind of funny for it being in one of the craziest <laughs> years. But, yeah, it's <laughs> I mean, absolutely. Yeah, a dream come true, I'd say, for sure. A lot of stages can feel the same. I I imagine that one feels a little bit different when you're standing on it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's historic. And, you know, it's sort of a a mark to to make your debut there. I mean, that's sort of one of the the, it's kind of like a a watermark of of my career, for sure. And and, and then with John, uh, and that wasn't the first time because you've also done In Spite of Ourselves, uh, I saw from a video, which... (laughs) There's a lot of great duetting songs. That one's got to be a little bit extra fun. Yes, there there is no better duet song than uh, In Spite of Ourselves. I mean, John Prine, I feel like, is like the, the master of, of the duet. I mean, it's, obviously, he's made, you know, duet records and that sort of thing, too. But he's just, he knows a good duet song. So <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was really fun to watch. I don't want to get, you know, too far outside of the record. I, I, of course, I had to ask about those things right there. But, but jumping back into it for a second, too, because... I mean, there again, there are great moments all over Old Flowers. Uh, if I told, I think that's going to be one of my favorite songs of the year. It already is. I just it, and I haven't been able to really stop listening. And what it brings back to me there is the importance of melody. That seems to be the most mysterious of all components of songwriting to me. How how any artist can find you know an interesting melody when it finally arrives. And I was hoping that there was, is there a story behind that song about, you know, how you kind of came up with the, the, the music and the melody for it? Yeah, it's kind of funny. We were, I was just about to go, this kind of, this happens often to me. I don't know if it's uh, this small part of me that works well under pressure or something, but we were about to go into the studio. I was on tour opening for Tyler Childers. We were playing these very large theaters and some nights the band and I would have two re- green rooms. And my producer, Starlo, was like, you know, no pressure, but if you have one song, more song on you, like, just just keep going for it. And so I was a week away from getting in the studio, and I (laughs) took a whole bottle of wine to my green room and just wrote, if I told him, maybe, like, 15 minutes. It just, like, poured out of me, and I, it was just one of those things. And it ended up being, you know, one that we all felt very close to by the end of the process, which is funny because it was just so close to the deadline, I guess, of recording. And um, it just kind of came all out. It was, it, there was, as far as melody, you know, I have no clue how <laughs> that melody came out of me. That's a big mystery to us too, um, especially somebody like me who really isn't trained or anything. I just sing and whatever comes out, you know, I try and sort of mold it in some ways, but that's what comes out. With a little bit of help from a bottle of wine. I like that part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you need like a little bit of a, a deconnection from self, you know, and in and, and terms of like just you can be very self-critical and that sometimes gets in the way of writing great songs. And, and so sometimes if you, whether that's wine or just getting out of your own head, you know, by walking or whatever you have to do. Like, you know, I think that's important as a writer. I know a lot of musicians get asked about uh, influences a lot. And and most of the time, the majority of the time, that's about musical leanings. I I was wondering, you know, as as such a fan of literature as you are and, and poetry, do you find that you have 
influences in the same way that maybe uh, on the musical side as you do on the literature side that you use inside your music? Yeah, I think they. I think everything influences it. I think it all sort of works together in this big, grand, mysterious way. I mean, I, I will say that, you know, there's, yes, absolutely to your question, because um, there is this Jack Gilbert poem, um, if you haven't heard of him, he's, he's an, one of my favorite poets, um, Flying Not Failing, I think is what it's called. And, and that's, poem influenced a lot of old flowers and and how I sort of look at love and life and in turn that sort of influences writing and yeah so poetry was a big influence on me for this record um and and authors are always sort of inspiring me and it all kind of like works in some ways together. I should give the tip of the hat to uh, bringing up uh, Tyler Childers there. I, I know you're also a, a Kelsey Walden uh, fan. And of course, you know, anytime we get to claim greatness in Kentucky, we always take it. And uh, it's just nice to get those, those names <laughs> out there as well. So it's a nice, um, it's a nice class of musicians uh, you're a part of these days. <laughs> yes. I'm very grateful to uh, come into into them. Uh, Courtney, uh, it was a pleasure talking to you. Again, I cannot compliment you enough on Old Flowers. It is a beautiful, beautiful, touching record. So thank you so much for uh, for making the music and, and thank you for taking the time to talk about it today, too. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. <laughs> no problem. Uh, we'll see you when we see you. Sounds good. Thank you. Bye. My thanks to Courtney Marie Andrews. Again, the, uh, the new album is called Old Flowers. Thanks to Courtney and thanks to you for checking out this episode. Appreciate you listening all the way to the end. Uh, hopefully you got inspired to hit that uh, follow button subscribe uh, let us deliver these new interviews to you every monday wednesday and friday so you can keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones and know what's happening in the music world again uh, if you need a good space to find us you can grab it at spotify uh, youtube itunes and apple podcasts or wherever you get your favorite podcasts from just uh, type in kyle meredith with subscribe we'll take care of the rest after that head to wfpk.org that's where I do a show, Monday through Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres and music news, anniversary spins, and bonus interviews, too. Again, that's wfpk.org. Consequence of Sound has your music and film news. You can also find me on just about any of the social media platforms, at Kyle Meredith. And that does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network. I know, now that we're 18th century homesteaders. <laughs> it's easy to hear your favorite artist on WFPK from wherever you are. Listen on your smart speaker, live stream from our website at wfpk.org, from Louisville Public Media.